I'm David Cassie, president of Three Dream Studios in Tulsa. Today, I'm going to talk with you about a client of mine that's also become a good friend of ours, Abundant Life Church in Kansas City, actually a suburb called Lee Summit, Missouri. And Dave Williams is the executive director of operations. Um, but think of it in terms of like he's the chief operating officer. And when he needs to be, he's also the chief financial officer of a church. A lot of people don't think that, um, you know, churches are really a big corporation, but they are. They're multifaceted corporations that have a, certainly a business side of everything they do, as well as a ministry side. So today I'm, I'm bringing in good friend of mine, Dave Williams. We're going to chat about some recent projects we've done and get to know him a little better. So here we go. Dave, tell me what's going on in Kansas City or Lee Summit. Well, it's warm today and it's Monday, so we're just getting getting ready to, to take on the week. Awesome. Listen, I was thinking about when we first met, and I think it was around 2015, and uh, you guys engaged our company to work on a capital campaign that you're going to do to build a new church. And at that time, I think you just had one campus. Is that right? Uh, that's correct. Yes. So we came up and provided a variety of services, and we really seemed to hit it off with your people and your church, and then we had a great time. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about that and then what happened since then and this last year when we actually did a second project together. So sure. I'm curious to know when when we first got connected, I think we got connected through an architect. Is that right? Yes. Through Mantel Teeter. Yes. Mantel Teeter. They are a great group of architects in the Kansas City area. I really love Mantel Teeter because. Not only are they just top rate, a lot of integrity, but they really have an innate skill to design great facilities for churches. They seem to really understand all the facets of what it means to build a church. I mean, you've got your big atrium lobbies. You've got basically little coffee shops. You've got to know things about that. You've got to build children's areas, and children's areas are like building a daycare center plus play areas and all these different things. And then, of course, um, a major auditorium, and uh, yeah, that's a performing arts center, basically. Yes. So th the skill sets that I see in Mantel are tremendous because you got to know a little bit, well, actually a lot about all those areas. And um, so let's go back and tell me, um, what were some of the challenges that you can remember maybe you were facing at the time in 2015 when you reached out to us? Well, probably one of the biggest challenges would be that as as ministry tries to cast their vision, uh, how, how can I capture that vision and how can I get that out to the people uh, to to help them see that? I mean, they can they you know, they they're here on Sunday and they listen to our uh, our lead pastor, Pastor Phil, and he he's very great at casting vision. But how do we keep that in front of people on a regular basis and how do we help them understand that? So that was one of the, the largest challenges we had or that I could see. Uh, so as we work with our architect, uh, Mantel Teeter, they I look for for what I like about them and you, David, is that that you both don't try to solve my problems. You try to help me understand my challenges. You try to help me understand what problems could arise. So we kind of blend that with what ministry is trying to do. So as, as, as we walk through that, we just need a team that can do that together and kind of understand each other and just to listen to each other. So that was basically what uh, really helped solve a lot of those challenges. Cool. So why I'm curious to know, why ultimately did you choose to move forward with us in our services specifically? I think from the very beginning, David, you you listened. Uh, you didn't try to solve my problem. You tried to understand what we were trying to do. Uh, the other thing that really impressed me about your company was you did a lot of research about what was our church about? What have we been doing? What are we doing now? And where are we trying to go? And you pulled that off our website and uh, you got a little information from me. But as you as you begin to dig deeper, you begin to ask me more questions that cause me to think more about what our ministry is trying to do. 
And that, that in turn was enabled me to go back to ministry and say, okay, here's an idea. Here's a, here's, is this the place? Is this the path? Uh, so that it just it set us up to win for the future that I'm sure you want to talk about later as far as when it comes to you coming to town and doing our interviews. Well, for certainly I've got to know I've got to get in the, the game of what's going on at your church so I can understand, obviously, how to direct and how to um, maybe make suggestions and things that are unique to you and what's going to make a success out of your project. Right. And each each church that we work with are just a little bit different. We all typically have the same goal. Ultimately, you know, we want to see change lives at the end of the day, right. even though it's going to take buildings. It's going to take things to accommodate, to have ministry happen. So, you know, I'll never forget. We actually climbed up on the roof to fly a <laughs> drone. And you're probably thinking, why do we got to do this? You know, but, uh, you know, there's nothing like an aerial perspective. So there's a lot of things that happen on a uh, on a project where we come in, we do filming for a weekend, we do interviews, coach your pastor to do an intro and an outro, including kind of a call to action. You know, and pastors know how to speak. Oh, yes. But there are specific things. Sometimes we have to coach and kind of remind pastors of these are key things that need to be said that are going to compel people to really engage. And um, of course, your pastor is uh, he's he's awesome and he does a great job at everything he does. And so he just he just rolled with it. And probably he was probably a one take wonder, I'm guessing. Yes. Yes, he is. So um, I just want to go to the next thing here. Um, what would you say out of all the things that we did for you that first time? What were some of the things that were the most effective in reaching your goals for the church? Oh, I, without a doubt, David, it, it had to be the the questions that you, you know, as we select the people for you to interview, uh, you set up a line of questions for them to think about. And you and so when it came time to interview them, uh, they were already confident in what they were what they were saying. And they just seemed like you, you were able to pull a lot of information out of them in a relatively easy manner. Uh, and it just it seemed to flow so well. And as I watched you interview uh, some of our members and our staff, uh, they were at ease and it was natural. And so that was the one thing that just seemed like it it was really heartfelt um, because we don't want it to be canned. It's not about that. It's about what God's doing. And it's about sharing that that vision and that passion. And that that's what was exciting to see you coach our people up to get to the real issue. And the issue is what's God doing and what's he going to do? What's he called you to do? And how has he done that in your life? So I mean, that, that was, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really important that people just be set at ease and they're not placed with an expectation. They kind of be prepared with a speech or something like that to help people understand we got to do this building campaign. It's right. really about just asking opening and questions and having them come to a place where they they want to um, say what they're saying. Right. And it's, that's not about a building campaign, you know I mean? Yeah. At the, end of the day, at the end of the day, you have to have it like you said earlier, but, but it's about what's God doing in, in the life of, of your church. What's God doing in the life of your people. Uh, so, and then how do you get that message out? Because that's the message that resonates. That's the message that continues day in and day out. That's the message people take home to say, well, what's God doing in our lives? So anyway, I yeah. talk, I've talked I digress. <laughs> well, that, that storytelling is the key piece. That's the glue. I mean, we love doing 3D animation. We love all this technology and cool things that we do with virtual reality. But at the end of the day, we I feel like we've missed it if we haven't allowed and created an opportunity for that story to be told. Right. That's just, again, that's part of the visuals. It's part of the way that we do it. It's about the stories. We say that all the time here. It's about the stories. That's right. You guys actually have a place in your lobby. And what's it called again? The story room. The story room. It's sectioned off area where people, I guess, can come maybe before, but certainly after the service to right. tell their story. And right. it's a really cool idea. I really love what you guys are doing there. 
Okay, so I want to kind of wrap up. The first part was 2015. We did a capital campaign. You guys built like a big worship center and you're in it now. What does that look like? What's the success of that? The overall flow of the building is, has been really positive. There's, you know, there's the, the auditorium space, but there's also a lot of gathering space out in our lobbies. And we have a little small cafe uh, that, that allows people to stay and, and have conversation and just, just, you know, hear each other's story, as we say, and also a time of, uh, for discipleship. Yeah. Uh, so fast forward a little bit, you know, you called me, I don't know, uh, six or nine months ago to reconnect and you guys are doing another campaign and you were telling me the success of how quickly you're able to pay down. I don't know where you're at exactly, but I remember you gave me enough detail to make me believe that you're getting close to having that other one taken care of that first campaign. Right. And then you also told me that you had grown with other campuses since we talked. <laughs> and so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just amazed at what's going on in your area. And, and honestly, the vision of your leadership, of yourself and your pastor and other pastors doing what you're doing in that area really is exciting. And so when you shared what you were doing up there, um, going to downtown Kansas City and you started sharing what was going on, I, I just could not wait to get started on it because it's such a creative idea. So share with me a little bit about that. And as you do, I want to bring up on the screen some visuals of what is going on and that you're taking this old building and, and doing some things. So just kind of tell me a little bit about it and uh, we'll see where it takes us here. Okay. Well, in short, I'll try to be brief, but in short, yeah. our young adult ministry, you know, they've, they've grown from, you know, 50 over the last few years to, to, like I said, you know, hunt, you know, seven, six, seven, 800 people. Uh, and and as we begin to see the the interest and the drive and just what what you know the world's doing and our millennials that are are so driven towards you know learning and and you know uh, their our our pastor he refers to you know that you know that group age group and this area of the cities is some of the least reached areas in our country so. Yeah. You know, we just started looking, okay, where can we go that's going to have a bigger impact than in suburban Lee Summit? And God just directed us downtown, right in the center of, you know, downtown Kansas City. Uh, this property became available and uh, it was a warehouse. We purchased it and began laying out some details of what ministry is going to need to to reach that community um, and just the various demographics of people that, that are in that area. So we began that planning and uh, as we... As we started that, we also realized during COVID that there was a huge online need uh, for people that want to stay home and still go to church. So we, we started looking into developing an online campus, uh, not just an online service, but an online campus. Uh, and while this was going on, we had a church approach us in a, another area of, of Kansas City that if we, their church was having some struggles, they won't know if we would, you know, take their church and just bring the ministry of abundant life out to their area of the city. And we said, yes, we would love to. So we've started that campus. Uh, and prior to that, we, uh, God shares with another, another area in our community that uh, there was a need for the type of ministry we do. And so uh, we went into a strip mall and found a, a gymnasium and just turned it into a church. So we, since since our first building with you, David, we've we've added three technically three campuses. So we're we're uh, we're we're moving and, and you know in the future four campuses. So uh, with our to two cities downtown and then our online campus. So. so there were several facets to your new campaign that we just completed the kickoff, and uh, one of them included this downtown facility. And I wanted to kind of look at this real quick because this is one of the tools that we provide for you to communicate the vision with your people. And that um, this is all 3D animated where we went in and we we taken um, this actually this building is actually really there. And that's a mural that's painted on that building by a local. I thought that was super cool. And it kind of plays into the atmosphere that you're trying to create in this courtyard. 
Right. Um, if you're going on over here, these actual those doors actually raise up. You go in, and you got a big lobby space here. It allows you to move in and through it, and actually into the service area where you're going to be able to have uh, worship, music. You can kind of see from the bird's eye view here what it looks like to look out across the seats if you're going to stand on the stage. One of the things that uh, I really love about this facility, and I can't wait for you to hurry up and get it done, Dave. So, you know, okay, get it, get it going. I know you guys are going to go and get it. Um, there's a rooftop experience where you can go up to the top and you can actually see out over the city. And that's super cool. I thought there's all kinds of things that can happen up here and yep. uh, just cool times at night. And you can see the downtown. That's actually what you'll see from that vantage point uh, looking downtown. It's pretty cool. So what we did basically is we did a composite of real life photography with the 3D animation of all this, which is not even created yet. Right. So it's a great way to have people understand what's happening uh, through this online experience we give you here. And by the way, I'm doing all this off the internet right now. I can hey, Dave, I'd, like, I'd yeah. like to add one other thing while we're on this, uh, the 3D animation. One of, the, one of the challenges I have is as ministry dreams and uh and, and budgets are looked at and, and architects are designing. Uh, this all has to happen pretty quick if you're going to throw a, a, you know, a capital campaign in it. Uh, and you're going to do like we've done here is a two year initiative. Uh, so all this has to happen really quick. So one of the things that has that's really helped me with our team, you being a part of that team, is that when we need action, we get action. Uh, and when your team has questions, they don't assume they ask questions. Uh, it's just like our architect. So, I mean, it's, it's important to have that team that's, that's can step in and, and help, help us move fast. When we need to move fast, slow down. When we need to slow down. So. Awesome. You know, I've got some great people that work for me. I can't take all the credit, <laughs> but I tell you, um, we've learned what it takes to, to move quickly, but also attain a high quality and a deliverable as well. I really think it's important to, to have excellence. And I know that abundant life is about excellence and yes. I want to bring my best a game to everything I do. And I love it when I'm being tugged on for that, you know, <laughs> cause it encourages me to the next level. Right. And, um, so also inside this virtual experience is actually a 3d virtual walkthrough. And uh, I won't go through all of this, but just kind of let it play for a second um, without the audio. Dave, I know that you did a uh, campaign kickoff and you really, I don't even know if you're really calling it a campaign. It's a, more of like a, like you said, a giving initiative for two years. Right. Um, you know, I think gone are the days of kind of the old school capital campaigns. Right. Um, my, my statement dates me. So <laughs> you're right. It's, I and mean, we, we didn't use that terminology. It was, you know, what's our, what's our two year vision? What's our two year initiative? And we try yeah. to look at, look at what God's doing in two year segments uh, and then build off of that. What's the first year, you know, and what's the second year and then celebrate that. And then, okay, God, two more years, you know, you know, so, and always have that time of celebration of what God's done, you know, in us and our church. Mm -hmm. Another thing that happened that's a key part, and I wanted to kind of bring that up here as well. Um, between your kickoff of communicating the whole vision to everybody in your church, and then the time that you have a commitment, um, you have a first fruit Sunday. Um, in between that kickoff where we show all the animation, all the cool, fun toys, um, there are videos that you show that are like testimonial videos that demonstrate right. life change. And what I love about these is that you're not just talking about the building. You're really talking about why we need these buildings. Right. And the why is we're going to be able to reach lives. And 
we're not hearing all the detail here, but there's a family here that they're telling their story. Right. What was happening in their life before they came to Abundant Life and then what happened after and then what's happened during their time there. And it's just really a great way to remind everybody, yeah, this is why we're doing all of this. Right. And then you have a First Fruit Sunday. So I was really proud of you guys because you called me. There's your other facility that you've already built. Right. That's awesome. Um, but one of the things I wanted to bring up here is um, you guys were very successful in this capital campaign. I can't take all the credit. I might be able to take a smidgen, just a smidgen credit. <laughs> but you guys had a successful, a very successful kickoff in your initial giving. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Well, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to. One thing we, we try to repeat uh, over and over is uh, praise God. Uh, this, this God's giving us so much, uh, and we're just thankful that he's allowed us to be a part of something that's just as large as what we've seen happen here at Abundant Life. Um, but yeah, our, uh, our, our, uh, our first campaign, um, yes, we've you spoke of it earlier that God provided funds that we're pretty much, you know, out of debt and which is an incredible, just, you know, from where we were, it's, it's incredible. And it's, I don't want to make it about numbers, uh, yeah. but I do want to, I would, I do want to just, you know, be thankful for what he's done through that. Uh, and with this new initiative, we just knew that we needed, uh, you know, 6 million over the next two years. You know, that's, we felt like we could accomplish what God's asking us to do. And, 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 and as we look at that and as, and as, you know, people would see those, those, uh, those, animations that you've created and our architect's design. Uh, it's, it's not about the buildings, the building's a tool, uh, but we want our buildings to become something that is not um, distraction. It's not, it's not less, it's not more. It's, it's, it disappears. It becomes a tool that people can enter in and be a part of what God's trying to do. And so it, we, we don't want to be a distraction, but as we as we start looking at what we thought we'd need to do our our two campuses, Independence and uh, downtown, uh, we felt like six million be what we could do. And you know that that first Sunday uh, the, that we had our first fruits offering, uh, God uh, uh, provided two million dollars for our people to give that Sunday. Uh, so, which is you know just just an incredible blessing to see, you know what what God's doing in the hearts of people. Uh, because it, I mean, anybody can write a check, uh, but it's, it's what's, what's in the heart of the people as you know, what's God asking them to do. And they're listening to God. They're not listening to Dave or David or, you know, Pastor Phil, they're listening to God, you know, which is, which I think is a true testament of what God's doing uh, through our church. Absolutely. You guys are the real deal. I, I love your church. Um, I can sense the leadership has really brought people to a place and understanding of their own positional place in Christ. Right. And they own it. They're very generous. I, they're not just generous with money, which you are. And I can see that through how you guys handle things and how you know you're expanding and, and offering um, more ministry time and opportunities for people. But also, um, you guys are just doing all, all the time, I just see different things happening through your online. I watch your online stuff sometimes and see what's going on. But I also see the generosity of just little things you do throughout the year. I mean, you have a year where everybody goes and tips or pays, uh, you know, a massive amount of uh, money at their meals on a certain Sunday and just to bless the community and all the service people out there. Um, there's outreaches to school kids. There's all kinds of things happening. And and I just love to see all that because that's boots on the ground stuff. And, and it uh, is. It's, it's not just. It's not just like you say the money. It's the time factor. You're, you know, people have said, "Yes, I've worked all week, um, and I've got my weekend, but I still, I still want to give that weekend to to our community, and you know, just just to be about to be to be that 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 person in in, in our community that that re, the, you know amplifies what Christ has asked us to do." Well, your people are very engaged and uh, that's refreshing to see. So 
Listen, Dave, is there anything I haven't asked you that maybe you're thinking about you might want to share that might help others? You know, I, I can't think of anything, David. Um, just just it's important to to have a team that listens to you and is able to ask you the hard questions. And um, I mean, it's all it's all about the kingdom. If we keep it about the kingdom, then we'll be OK. So that's that's really that's that's why you're on our team, David. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm glad I'm just not another guy that does animation that can come in there. Um, listen, uh, I've really enjoyed our chat and I've enjoyed working with your church. Um, everybody on staff there is just incredible. And I really feel connected in more ways than, than one. And um, I can't wait to see what the future holds. And um, I just want to encourage you guys to keep moving on, keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep looking up as they say. That's and um, Dave, let's, uh, let's spend some time sometime soon and get caught up more about what the future holds. All right, sounds good, David. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right, thank you.